What is going on? Chris Atwood here. I am live and talking about timelines for weddings. And I have an adorable person in my office. Say hi to Kiki. Hi, say hi, Kiki. We're going live. All right. So Kiki, that's Angel's daughter. So she's just hanging out with me because she's one of the coolest people I know. But I want to actually make this video because I want to send it to one of my brides that just emailed me. So um, one of the things that we encounter lots of times, and actually what's interesting, it's definitely regional because it doesn't really happen in New Jersey, central New Jersey, or north New Jersey. Um, definitely a lot more in south Jersey or when I go to different states, sometimes Philly, Virginia, I've had this encountered with timelines. So I kind of want to go over a little bit timelines. What's the best method for making a timeline? And the reason why I want to go over this because I just got this in an email. All right. So for this wedding, they decided to do, um, it's a, uh, I guess, 7 o'clock, uh, 6.45 doors open. Okay, so that's awesome. That's what we normally do. Then 7.10 guests uh, seated. What's going on, Danny? How you doing? What's up? I'm doing a live video, so just give me a minute if you can. Or give me like five minutes. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So once again, sorry. So we open the doors at 6.45. Guests come into, um, we do wedding party introductions. That's awesome. First dance, yes. Toast. Um, yeah, actually, usually we do blessing before toast, but not a big deal. So blessing, toast, first course, cool, awesome, right? Now here is my, I guess my issue, okay? So next we have cake cutting. So traditionally cake cutting will come much later in the evening, and I'll discuss that a little bit, a little bit further. But maybe the photographer, videographer has to leave early. Maybe they're only there for a certain time. So maybe that's why we're doing cake cutting early, not really stressing about it. That's not too bad. What I'm stressing about a little bit is that we have all these things right in a row. So I do have a little time, but... I, sorry, I was uh, distracted by Keithy. Sorry. But uh, I do have a little time, but I have force course at 7.45. They want me to do cake cutting right after that. And then 8.30, they have dinner. And then right after that, parent dances. And they leave all, two hours at the end for dancing. Okay. So my issue with this is, okay, first of all, they leave two hours of open dancing, right? Second. All right. I want to know, how many people can go out there and dance for two hours straight? I know I can't. Now, I know most people can't. And I know if you have a wedding with a mixed ages of people, anywhere from the average age of 25 to about 55, I don't think most guests can dance for two hours straight. So what I like to do or what I like to suggest is to definitely segment your wedding to get the optimal dance floor. So what do I mean by that? So what we're going to do, instead of just kind of doing everything up front and leaving everything at the behind. One second, Kiki needs me again. Yes, Kiki. Isn't that kid in the wedding? Yeah. That's cool. Very cool. So, all right. So I like to segment my wedding. So what I mean by that? I like to do my opening formalities up front, okay? So do it up front, get it out the way, including parent dances and, um, yeah, including parent dances. The reason why I like to get parent dances out the way, sometimes, let's say if we let dancing happen before we do the parent dances, people get uh, a little disheveled, you know, with their clothes. They might drop something. I saw someone drop a glass of wine in someone else's dress. You wouldn't want that in your video. So get your parent dances out the way. You don't have to stress about it. It's out the way. You don't worry about it later. So, and then everything's done up front, you know? So it's cool that... All the cinematographers or photographers, everyone's right there for your introductions. So just complete the cycle. Yes, Kiki. Remember, uh, like, kids' dresses? Yes. That's gross. Okay. Kiki, can you give me, like, five? All right. So, um, like I said, segment your thing. So first do your introductions and everything like that. Do everything up front. Then give, like, about, you know, a good half an hour. I don't need a long dance set, but I just need, a sh you know, something just to get people to dust the sh the the... the the, the, I call it, uh, shake the dust off. So give me about a good, you know, half an hour dance up the front. Then do your dinner. Then after dinner, do another dance set. Maybe a little longer. Maybe this time 45 minutes, you know? So now you have, let's say, an hour and 15 minutes of dancing or something like that, okay, that you've done. All right? So then after that, we'll do cake after that. Reason why? It gives a break. Now with these breaks, let's say dinner and with your cake break, what it enables us to do is enable us to say, everyone, go have a break right now. What do I mean by break? Everyone, whoever wants to go, now you can go to the bathroom, you can get a drink, you can go talk to friends, you can do whatever you want at a group time. And then controversially, on the back end, that means everyone is going to be on the dance floor for the whole time. Almost all the brides I talk to always mention, like, I want a packed dance floor for the whole night long. If you have two hours of open dancing, it's really tough to do 
I'm not saying it's possible. I see DJ Ed Swift on there, and he's such a great DJ. I'm sure he can make you dance for two hours straight. But, and so can our guys, by the way. I just want to mention that too. But like I said, it's really hard for a DJ to entertain people for two hours straight. Most people just don't, it's not even, even athletic-wise. Most people just don't have the attention span to sit there for two hours straight. They want to break it up and maybe do get a drink, go to the bathroom, hang out with friends, or whatever. So segment it. Try to keep your dance sets to about 45 minutes. Maybe your last set could be a little bit longer, maybe an hour and 15 or something like that. But try to segment it. I'm telling you, it'll make your party so much better. So as a group, we get to dance. As a group, we get to de- eat. As a group, we get to drink and everything like that. And that is a number, it's just a top key that I see so many places not doing correctly. I see a lot of timelines doing incorrectly. So, and what I mean by incorrectly, I mean incorrectly for the, uh, the best dance party. And if that's what you're looking for, you know, I've had some guests that say the dance party isn't the most important thing of their wedding. But I can honestly say that most people that hire us are looking for a dance party. And most people that hire my friends in the industry, such as, once again, I'll shout him out. I see uh, Doug Phillips on here and DJ Adam Swift. Most people that hire us are looking for dance parties. You're looking for a great dance party. Please, please segment your formalities throughout your night, and your wedding will be so much awesome. So that's it. Um, I'm going to send this to my bride. Hopefully you guys got some information, and I'll holler at you soon. Kiki, all right. Any- I love your flower. Thank you. All right. Have a nice day. Say bye. Say bye to bye. people. <laughs> all right.